the number of Americans who are 16 years or older and who have decided not to participate in the nation's labor force has climbed to a record 90,609,000 in September. Let me cut to the chase here. So when Obama took office in January 2009, there were 80,507,000 Americans who weren't in the labor force. Now there's 90,609,000. So in other words, that number has increased 10 million 102,000 people who are no longer in the workforce. They've just dropped out. That many more than 2009, despite the stimulus, despite all the spending, despite all the, all the manipulation, all the social engineering, all the rest. It's a disaster, an absolute disaster. The economy is dead. Oh, they're little pockets of growth, but they're pockets of depression, too. And, of course, what Obama has in store for what's left of the private sector the EPA with these massive killer regulations that are about to be, be imposed upon us. All the other departments, too, and not to mention Obamacare. It's just crushing. In the meantime, the liberals like to talk about women. Oh, we're going to defend their right to contraceptives. Because this is where their heads are. In genitalia, in race. What a phony issue. What a bunch of frauds. But also at CNS, Terry Jeffrey. Listen to this, ladies. American women participated in the nation's labor force in September at a rate that matched the lowest level in 24 years, according to data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. The number of women actually holding jobs declined by 154,000 from August to September. Why can't Republicans talk about this stuff? They want to talk about condoms and the pill? Let them. We want to talk about reality. It's simple. If somebody in this country, some woman in this country, some woman in Virginia, I'm just responding to these Democrat ads, is having difficulty getting contraception, why don't you call my show? How about that, Mr. Call Screener? Apparently this is a huge problem in America because the Democrats keep running on it. Obama's running on it. That uh, sleazeball, uh, Terry McAuliffe is running. If you're a woman in Virginia, if you're a woman anywhere in the country, and you've been denied contraception. Why don't you give me a call? We'll keep your name secret. Because this must be an epidemic. It must be because the Democrats are spending tens of millions of dollars in races, raising this as the number one issue for women. And yet, as I just said, I look at the labor force data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, Terry Jeffrey reporting at CNS News, women in the workforce is at the lowest level in a quarter of a century. In a quarter of a century, when will Republicans make the case that Obama doesn't stand for the little guy or gal? He stands on them. People are dropping out of the workforce. Women can't find jobs. And what about young people? They can't find jobs either. They're talking about the lost generation. Well, why is it lost? Because Obama has his boot on the throat of the economy. That's why. Because Obama despises the private sector just as he despises the military. And so we are. We're having to deal with the consequences of this, are we not? And then on top of this, look what he's doing to the United States military. Well, Mark, that's the sequester. He came up with the sequester, and 50% of those cuts come out of the United States military, even though the military isn't even close to 50% of our budget. Listen to this one. Investors Business Daily, Andrew Malcolm. While the president pitched his crumbling health care program like a late-night infomercial barker, the Army's chief of staff made a shocking admission about national defense. General Ray Odenero told a Washington conference Monday the U.S. Army had not conducted any training in the last six months of the fiscal year ending September 30. And he said there currently are only two Army brigade, uh, brigades rated combat ready. That's a total of between seven and 10,000 troops and less than one-third what the combat veteran regards as necessary for proper national security. He said, right now, we have in the Army two brigades, brigades that are trained. That's it. Two. Obama is destroying these institutions that have been built up from one generation to the next. He's destroying our economy. He's destroying our military. He's destroying NASA. He's destroying our currency. He's destroying our fiscal state with these massive deficits and debt. And now he's destroying our health care system. How did this man win re-election? He won re-election because the Republican establishment controlled the process 
from beginning to end, and they seek to control it again. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no way Barack Obama should have won his first election, let alone his re-election. And until we address people who run the Republican Party, the so-called leadership in Congress, their mouthpieces on TV and elsewhere, they're going to keep winning. And Hillary Clinton or somebody similar to her, they all have the same mind, will be elected. And we'll have 12 years of this, 16 years of this. If there's any woman in the country, any woman in the country, and particularly Virginia, since, uh, since this is a big issue here, apparently, who cannot get access to contraceptions, contraceptives, would you please call in and tell us what your problem is? What's the problem? Do you not live near a CVS or a Walgreens? Or I'll tell you what, I'll even take it one step further. All you liberal Democrats out there and campaign operatives, we're leaving a couple lines open. Please tell me, if I'm governor of a state and I want to prevent women from getting the pill or some other form of contraceptive, what would be the legal basis upon which I could do that, given the Supreme Court's rulings since half a century ago? Tell me. Tell me how I would stop it. Of course, I'm not saying I would. I'm asking them. You're running these commercials. So if I'm running for governor of X state, and I'm saying, and you're running commercials against me saying, I am going to prevent women from getting contraceptives. I would like you to tell me the legal basis on how I could do that, given what the Supreme Court has ruled for the last half century. Tell me. And if somebody is denying a woman out there contraceptives, I want you to call in and tell me how that's happening. Because I am sick of this lie, which apparently is very influential, because in Virginia, 60% of the women support McCulloch, and these are the commercials he keeps running. Now, we have tried to get this McCulloch on this program, so I can question him myself about this. He won't come on. We've tried to get his campaign manager on this program. He won't come on. We've tried to get his political, uh, his, his what, his PR guy on here. He won't come on. You want to know why he won't come on? Because they're liars. That's why. That's why. Meanwhile, they run with that crap, and women in the labor market is at the lowest level in 24 years. The lowest level in 24 years. 10 million more people have fallen out of the workforce from 80 million to 90 million under this president. 300,000 people, it's on the Drudge Report, 300,000 people have just lost their health care in Florida as a direct result of Obamacare and hundreds of thousands of others across the nation. And this is going to affect a lot of you union folks. I hope you're listening. It's going to affect teachers. It's going to affect Teamsters. It's going to affect everybody. Everybody. And we couldn't beat this guy? We couldn't beat this guy because the Republican establishment was scared to take him on, and they're still scared to take him on. That's why they'd rather attack Ted Cruz, a single United States senator who hasn't even been there for 12 months. He showed them how to do it, he showed them the way, and he's still under attack. Forget the liberals and the Democrats and the media, he's under attack by the Republicans and the Republican establishment. He's under attack by the Chamber of Commerce, the same United States Chamber of Commerce that supports amnesty, the same United States Chamber of Commerce that supported that trillion-dollar stimulus. Crony capitalists, Obama could have been beaten, and frankly, quite easily, because his record stunk. And instead, Romney was so busy trashing Republicans to get the nomination, as were his consultants, as were his media mouthpieces, that he wouldn't do the same when it came to Obama. He was advised by Rove and others, don't attack Obama. What? And they blew it. And they blew it. McCain, another one, utterly inept. Inept. He blew it. These aren't my guys. And now, now, they attack conservatives. I've heard it said... And they're still saying it. The Republican establishment, the status quo neostatists. If only we had had that 16 days back from the government shutdown. If only Ted Cruz hadn't gone on for 21 hours about Obamacare. Listen to this. Then the full effects of Obamacare could have been talked about earlier. This, you see, is a Republican strategy inside the Beltway. Just sit back and let things happen. As if you sit back and let things happen. Obamacare is not going to fall of its own weight, ladies and gentlemen. It'll change. It'll change. If Obama needs to change it, he'll change it. If he needs to centralize it more, he'll centralize it more. If he wants to issue more waivers, he'll issue more waivers. If he wants to drag more people into it and direct the IRS, 
then that's what he'll do. And nobody's going to stop him. You know how I know? Because they haven't stopped him to this day. To this day. Look what's happening to our country. These unemployment figures come out, and who's analyzing them? CNSnews.com. ABC News, NBC, CBS, the rest of them, they always try and put a positive gloss on it, or less of a negative gloss. The guy's destroying our country. He's destroying our, you know, the backbone of this country. The ability of people to get jobs and invest and save and get their own health care and so forth. And they act like he's 10 feet tall. He's not 10 feet tall. He's a midget. I'll be right back. 